One of the most popular, if not the most popular, reason to use Photoshop is to combine elements of more than one image into one finished design. Images can be combined in a number of ways, including to copy and paste it from one layer to another layer or from one document to another. You can drag and drop your selections from one layer to another layer or from one document to another document. You can duplicate duplicate content any way that you know how to do that. Uh, we'll talk about duplicating it with brushes so that you, you kind of paint and as you paint you're copying content from one area to another. We can layer content using layer masks and we learned that in chapter 9, selections and masks, and so we'll kind of repeat that a little bit for this chapter. We can merge images together to create panoramas. We can use adjustment layers and blending modes to overlay images and let them blend from one image to another. And then we can paste content and so specifically, I'll show you how to paste into a selection. Selections can also be modified to have harder, smooth edges and feathering to create a subtle transition between your items. And so one of the key things that you will realize as you're completing this chapter or this lecture along with me is that you're going to have to start combining the things that you learned in earlier chapters to get better results moving forward. And what I mean by that is specifically when we talked about selections, we talked about the ability to refine your selection or to feather the edge so that it had a soft edge and it didn't really stand out as, as being different from the background. Um, the more you can make your adjustments look subtle, uh, the more natural the combined images will look. Now you don't always want the combined images to look completely natural. Maybe you want it to look like a collage, and in that case you would use different options. But for the most part, we're trying to, or maybe we're trying to remove the background of one image and replace it with another, and we want it to look as natural as possible. And so when you're combining images, it could be to replace some sort of element on the screen that you didn't like. And so there's this picture. I, I think this is, I just got this off a stock image website, I believe. Um, this is from Paris, France. And the billboard is in the top left-hand corner. Maybe I don't like that billboard. Maybe I'm trying to make this look like it's older than it is or it just has a different style. Or maybe I'm using the background and I'm trying to promote my product, which is not the product that's in the first image. And so with this example, all I did was copy and paste. Uh, I copied the two, these are two posters. I copied them and I pasted them and I sat them on a new layer right on top of the original uh, billboard. But as you can see, if you do that, it doesn't always look right. And so the next thing I want to emphasize is that just because you can combine the images doesn't mean that you're finished or that it's correct or it's the best that it could be. And so as I'm looking through uh, and I'm looking at, let's say call this example number two here, as I'm looking at example number two, I'm thinking to myself, it looks weird, it stands out. You can see that it wasn't part of the original image. And so then you can experiment with the layer blending modes or adjustment layers and things like that that we've already covered, and you could try to create a more subtle look. And so in the third example, I've kind of lowered the intensity of the color. I, I blended it backwards so that it would blend in a little bit better. Maybe that works. Or maybe I'm going for a stylized look and I go even further with example number four. And now you can, if you just glance at it just as the one image, you can't immediately know that those posters weren't on the billboard to start uh, when the photo was taken because the entire image now looks like it's desaturated and stylized as one. Some other ways that you can combine images are to use layer blending modes. And so uh, this is a really popular thing currently where people want to take an image and they want to replace part of the image with like a sunset or something like that. And so you may have seen this before. And I'll show you a couple ways. I'll jump to Photoshop in the next video. Uh, but I'll show you a couple ways to do that. But you don't have to use part of one image and part of another in the sense where you make a selection and you copy and paste things like I did for the first example. I have, in these two examples, I have a picture. This is a uh, Emma Watson, uh, if I can get her name right. I just pulled that off the internet. I did a search for images uh, through Creative Commons, grabbed that to use for the example. And I used that with the first sunset background here. And I just told Photoshop, make the layers interact in such a way that you can see the sunset through her. And then I tried it with this other image over here. And you can see it gives you two completely different results. And maybe you like one better than the other. But that's another way to combine your images. I'm going to end this video. Uh, for the next video, I'm going to open up some images and start combining them. And so if you want to follow along with me, you're going to need to grab an image off the internet. I'm just going to grab a random image um, that has a person. It doesn't have to be black and white if you can't find one. And of some sort of sunset. And uh, we'll go from there.